start now. Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the Global Quran Conversation. I'm Yulia Rizwan. It is my honor to moderate discussion on early Dutch Quran translation, historical analytical approaches. So we are honored today to have Dr. Tijani Bulauli as our speaker. Dr. Bulauli completed his studies in Arabic language and literature at Muhammad I Oshda University in Morocco before pursuing a master's degree in theology and religious studies at Free University Amsterdam. He earned his PhD in Arabic studies and Islamology at Catholic University Leuven, focusing on biblical frame on re of reference in modern Dutch Quran translation. And Dr. Bula Uli now currently is working as a faculty member coordinator of the Master in World Religion and Islamic at Catholic University Leuven, Belgium. His academic journey has led him to contribute significantly scholarship in the field of Islam, globalization, and also interreligious dialogue. Dr. Bula Uli expertise will help us today to understand how translation of the Quran in Dutch have been influenced by biblical reference and also how uh, the dynamic of the culture and theological exchange between Christian and Islam. So, Without further ado, I invite Dr. Bula Uli to begin his presentation for the next 40 minutes. Please join me to welcome uh, Dr. Bula Uli. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your introduction. Uh, I would like to begin by expressing my thanks uh, to the organi organizers uh, of the Global uh, Quran Project for uh, inviting me to tribute a uh, research paper to this initiative and uh, to present my lecture uh, today. I would uh, especially uh, like to the Professor uh, Yuna Pink, the principal uh, investigator of uh, this CAG project, and I deeply appreciate her valuable uh, efforts. I also like to extend my thanks to all the audience. Actually, uh, I am not good at uh, speaking English. I usually use uh, English as a research language, not as a teaching or communication uh, medium. I teach uh, in Dutch and Arabic, and most of my activities are in these two languages. But I'm uh, trying my best to speak English today, and I apologize for my mistakes and phonetic problems. Well, uh, my paper uh, focuses on the topic of early Dutch Quran translations. In uh, my uh, presentation, I will provide a historical overview uh, of this topic by discussing uh, the following four uh, questions. Uh, firstly, how did academic interest in Arabic and Islamic studies historically been in the Netherlands? Secondly, to what extent did Christianization factor influence the early Dutch Arabists in the 17th century? Thirdly, when and how was the field of Dutch Quran translation historically established? Uh, fourthly, what was the uh, uh, portrayal uh, of Islam in the early Dutch Quran translation of, uh, or translations? Uh, first of all, I would like to point out uh, that I had already addressed uh, this topic in my PhD project at the University of Leuven between uh, 2016 and 2019 titled the biblical reference frame works of contemporary dutch translators of the quran namely of kramers Hals, and edward verhoff but it was only a general historical overview of the dutch translations of the quran a few months ago, I returned to 
this subject and I, uh, I conducted deeper research. In my lecture uh, of today, I will attempt to present some important findings and results. Actually, there are a total of 16 Dutch Quran translations, which can be divided into uh, two main categories. On the one hand, uh, there are seven translations made by Arabists and uh, Dutch theologians. This cate uh, category includes for older translations, the oldest is of Bernsma from 1641 and three new translations uh, or modern translations uh, by Kramer, Slim House and Hof, which formed the research corpus of my PhD project. These translations of Arabists, uh, Arabists and Dutch the uh, theologians are generally intended for Dutch readers. On the other hand, there are the Dutch Quran translations made by Muslim translators. This category contains nine translations, the most recent translation uh, being that of, uh, of uh, Ibrahim Spalberg made in 2010. These uh, Islamic or uh, translations of Muslim translators are prim primarily intended for Muslims as a tool to help them understand their faith. Uh, regarding uh, the early interest in Arabic uh, studies in the Netherlands, I would like uh, to refer to some, uh, some important examples. I start with the earliest Dutch document that mentions or, or mentioned the Arabic language Sar Saracens and Muslims, which dates from the late uh, 15th century, uh, namely in uh, 1486. It is a Dutch translation of Erhard Reveck's account of his journey uh, to the Holy Land undertaken with Bernard von uh, Briandbach. This account also contains illustrations of cities such as Cairo and Jerusalem. The second example is the Delft legal scholar and writer Juhu Krutius, uh, who discussed the issue of Muhammad in his book, The Law of War and Peace from 1625. He described Islam as a religion founded on violence, and Muhammad as a robber and an adulterer, and he did not produce miracles. He only brought the sword. I think, uh, I personally think that uh, the first significant attempt to study Arabic and Islam was made in the first half of the 6th century by the Flemish scholar uh, Nicolaus uh, Klinardus from this here in, uh, in Flanders, in Belgium. He studied Arabic grammar and the Quran under the guidance of the young scholar Muhammad ibn Abi Fadl Karouf. This scholar was one of the Tunisian prisoners of war. Linardus' aim was to organize a peaceful campaign com uh, to face in Morocco, to convert Muslims to Christianity. According to uh, Van Koningsfeld, Linardus was not only interested in the Ara Arabic language, but also in the Quran. An Arabic Quran manuscript a manuscript in the collection of the Leiden University Library has uh, belonged uh, belong to him. Uh, now I go on to the foundation, uh, foundation of the Arabic studies and 
I uh, I cut here. Uh, I here uh, Hamilton, uh, a lighter who states within fifty years between sixteen and ten and sixteen sixty Dutch revolution revolutionized the study of Arabic. They produced some of the best editions of Arabic texts, the best readers, the best dictionaries, and the best grammars, and they uh, assembled one of the very best libraries of Arabic works in Western uh, Europe. This, I think this, this means uh, that the beginning of uh, the, the beginning of the 17th century, especially the, the year 1613, is considered uh, the official starting point of Arabic studies in the Netherlands. In this year, the, the chair of Arabic at Leiden University was establ established under the supervision of Thomas Erpinius. As a result, the University of Leiden became a center uh, of Protestant scholars and students from various European countries. I use here the classification uh, of John Ball in her book, uh, 17th century, Practitioners of Arabic in the Netherlands uh, from 1939, uh, th 31. She divided Dutch Arabists into three categories. Firstly, the early interest in Arabic language and Islamic theology in 16th century. Uh, especially by Franciscus Raphilingius and Josephus Justice Scalacher. Scalacher applied, applied in this period a crucial uh, role. Uh, he had a collection uh, of the collection of an oriental uh, oriental books and manuscripts. Uh, in Leiden, in the University of Leiden, and also, uh, also uh, he persuaded the board of the university to establish a chair in Arabic studies. Secondly, the founders uh, of Arabic studies in the seventh century by Thomas Erpenius, and then. Uh, his uh, favorite uh, student, uh, Jacobus Collius. I could uh, here, uh, Tomer, uh, who uh, states about or uh, about uh, Collius, he was uh, attached as an engineer, engineer to. A Dutch mission to Morocco, where he improved his skills in the language and collect, uh, collected manuscripts. Thirdly, the successors, dozens of students of Erpenius. What is striking is uh, here that Erpenius' successors were not Dutch but foreigners. In this section, I discuss some Dutch Arabists from the 17th uh, century and see uh, how they, they uh, of their own Christian faith has influenced their view of Islam. And I would like to begin with Skalicher, who is a uh, considered the only Dutch Arabist who wanted to distance Arabic studies from missionary 
work. He emphasized the importance of the Quran as philological source rather than theological text. Scalicher also rejected the study of Arabic for missionary purposes and, op and opposed studying the Quran with the aim of refuting it or converting Muslims to Christianity. I personally think that uh, uh, that uh, he would uh, would actually be significant turning point in the history of Arabic studies in the Netherlands, but un uh, unfortunately, it was an ex exception and the only attempt in that period. The second figure is Thomas Erpenius, who was appointed a professor of Arabic at Leiden University in 1613. Erpenius believed uh, that several Islamic dogmas were not as easy to refute them, and he thought that the knowledge of Arabic can contribute to the understanding of Hebrew and Aramaic and can be used for converting the Muslims to Christianity. In a, in a letter to his teacher, William Bedwell from uh, London in England, Erpenius included three chapters from the Quran, which he regarded as the best instruction, uh, instruction for his Quranic studies. In addition, he translated Surah 12 of the Quran from Arabic into Latin for scholarly purposes with the in intention of producing a full translation of the Quran. Unfortunately, he passed away before completing his translation, uh, this translation project. The third example uh, from this uh, period, from the 16th, uh, 17th century, uh, is Jacobus Holios, who was the favorite student of Thomas Erpenius. In 1622, he was appointed as er er Erpenius' suc suc uh, successor at the university. Holios was influenced by the reviling Christian apologetic perspective in Europe. Although he emphasized the scientific, academic, and lit lit literary aspects of Arab studies, he held a negative view of Islam. He believed such as his teacher Erpenius that Arabic studies could be used as a tool to convert limbs to Christianity. Curious uh, improved version of Erp uh, Erpenius Grammatica Arabica from 1656 was supplemented with three chapters from the Quran. Moreover, he planned to publish uh, a text of the Quran to uh, demonstrate its errors. The fourth figure is Adrian Riad from another academic circle, namely from the University of Utrecht. Riad adopted a different approach of Islam. He emphasized studying Islam from an inside perspective and based on authentic Islamic and Arabic sources. and also in the light of reason. He discussed in his book on the Muhammadan religion from 1705, several misconceptions of European theologians and Arabists about Islam and the Prophet Muhammad. Despite all these, 
Relant did not distance himself from the missionary perspective and apologetic goals, as is confirmed by most scholars who spe specialize in its theology. Now, I will continue with the establishment of the Quran translation in the Netherlands in the 16th century when, when two Quran translations were published, namely Brinsma's Arabisa the Arabisa al Quran in 1641 and Plasmacher's uh, Mahomet's uh, al Quran in uh, 1641. 57. I begin with the, uh, the first translation, the Arabis, uh, Arabis al Quran, that uh, was published by Barent Adrian's Bentsma. It was a Frisian book, bookseller and publisher, but unfortunately, the identity of the translator is unknown. And this uh, edition was entirely based on the German translation by uh, Salomon uh, Schweiger from six, uh, 1616, uh, 16, 1616 and contains 164 pages. Uh, for this research uh, paper, I have used the digital Quran version of the Dutch National Library. The Christianization of Muslims was the main goal of this translation as emphasized in the quote below. Brintzma's Quran translation contains five parts, as you see on the screen. The second and the third books or parts are devoted for the translation of the Quran chapters. I have here a timeline uh, line of this uh, of the origin of this uh, translation, and uh, I, I find that. The two 17th century Dutch Quran translations of Bensma and Klasenmacher are based or were based uh, on different sources. The Quran translation produced by Bensma in 1641 uh, is essentially translation of the German uh, version by Salomon Schweiger from 1616, uh, which in turn was not a di direct translation from Arabic, but derived from uh, Castro Dardo's Italian translation from uh, 1547. And the last one was based on the first Latin Quran translation by Robert of Caton. Uh, from uh, 1143. In trust, the translation by Hlasmacher, uh, as we will see in the follow uh, following slides, uh, uh, was published in 1657 and was based on the French version, uh, version by André de Royer, who translated the Quran directly from Arabic. Now I move on to the, the second uh, early Dutch translation of the Quran, namely uh, uh, Mahomet's Al-Quran from 1657. It was uh, made by Jan Pisk Plasmaker and published by Jan uh, Yortes in Amsterdam. It is based on the French translation uh, by André de Roy. And there, there are uh, or, uh, several editions 
of this translation. And I use uh, the for my paper and uh, my research the first edition from 1657, which contains 835 pages. This translation, this Quran translation of Plasmacher contains eight parts. As you see here on the screen, the third part is the vote or the translation of the Quran chapters, the uh, Quran uh, 114 chapters in uh, 691 pages. And the edition of the uh, Mahomet's Al-Quran uh, of uh, uh, Klaus Marker, uh, Marker's translation from 1696 is decorated with six copper uh, plates by Kaspar Leuken, as shown on the screen. The first four plates are about Islamic prayer, the Salat. The fifth uh, plate shows uh, Muhammad falling in a trance to the ground uh, at the feet of his wife, Tadija, and a monk accompanying her, perhaps her cousin, Waraka ibn Nofal. The sixth plate shows several Muslims on a large square and how a bull uh, approaches Muhammad, who unites a book that the animal carries between its horns. Above, uh, it flies a dove uh, with letter tied around its neck. One of the uh, important uh, questions, research questions, in my, uh, my article or research paper was about the, the image or, or portrayal of Islam in the early Dutch Quran translations. Both uh, Berentzema and Klaus Marker have portrayed Islam as a Turkish religion. In the introduction of uh, his translation, Bensma uh, described the Quran as a book der Turn Religi, namely book of Turkish religion. Also, Klaus Marker introduced Islam as religion of the Turks as stated in the title of the introduction of, uh, of the in, uh, introduction of the, his translation. Kurt Begrip van de Godsdienst der Turken. Eh? A short uh, explanation of uh, the of the uh, the Turks uh, religion and I uh, have here also another const Quran who, uh, who was the Quran introduced in these two uh, uh, tra translations early Dutch translations from 16th uh, uh, century here we see the influence of the biblical frame of refer uh, reference on this transla Quran translations that was not only limited to the theological dimension, but went beyond it to the linguistic dimension. Benz Benzma trans uh, translated the word Quran uh, with the equivalent Bible. He described the Quran as the Turks, uh, Turk, uh, Turks Bible and uh, Mahometistan Bible. Likewise, Klaus Marker translated the Arabic term Masajid, here Masajid, with the Dutch Kerken, 
namely in English churches, instead of Muskeen Mosque in, uh, in English. The Prophet Muhammad uh, was uh, introduced as a fake or false prophet on a uh, negative uh, way. Uh, as we see here in these two quotes, uh, quotes uh, from uh, Benzma and plasma translations. From here, you can understand uh, and learn when and from where her false prophet Muhammad took his origin and beginning. And uh, in the second uh, citation of plasma this book is a long talk about God, the ang uh, angels, and Mahomet, which is plus me uh, genius invented by this uh, false prophet. I, I try now to uh, to discuss some translation problems of these two uh, Dutch early Dutch translations, and I begin with a chapter the opening or the op the opener uh, by Berend Sma. I think the there are two types of translation problems in this translation of Berend Sma. The first translation problem has to do with the structure of this chapter. One, one and a half verses are missing. For example, here, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God, is not mentioned in, uh, in verse 2. Here, verse 2 is not mentioned. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Only the, the second uh, tense, tenses here, this here and other thing, Rabbal Alameen, but price be to God is missing. Huh? And first four is missing completely. Huh? I think, if, uh, no, uh, I think uh, first three, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Huh? This is missing comple completely. And this makes this translation incomplete. The second translation problem is related to incorrect transfer of meaning. For example, verse 2, in verse 2, Rabb al-Alamin, here, Rabb al-Alamin, was translated as the Lord of all things. While its original meaning is Lord of the worlds. First five is also incorrectly translated. Its meaning is you do so as here in in the this this English trans, uh, translation of uh, Hussein Sayyid Nasr. They, they, there we worship and from they we seek help. This also applies to the last ver uh, ver uh, verse, the seven, which is incorrectly translated far from its original meaning. Uh, compared to Bentsma's translation of the Quran, if I, I personally find Glasmacher's translation to be better, both stric 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 structurally and st uh, stylistically. Glasmacher has uh, preserved the original structure of this chapter without missing 
single verse or sentence. Only a small uh, uh, piece of Rabb al Alameen is missing in the second verse. Khlas Marcus style and the language are clear to the modern Dutch reader. For example, he translated Maliki, Maliki here uh, in uh, verse 4, Mali, uh, Maliki or Ma uh, Maliki, with Conin, uh, namely in English King, and that is the correct translation equivalent, while Bernsma used an, uh, another equivalent uh, word, uh, namely Rechter Georgia in English. The only stylistic and grammatical error is in the translation of the last sentence here in uh, Dutch. Wij zullen niet afgedwaald wezen. In the translation of Nasser, not, uh, or uh, under translation, English translation here, uh, li uh, li uh, literally uh, translation, and we shall not go astray. But the, the correct meaning is uh, as here in the translation of Nasr, nor of those who are astray. Waladali in Arabic. I have another example from the, uh, the second uh, chapter of the Quran, namely Al Baqarah, Surah Al Baqarah, the uh, call, from uh, verse 1 to verse 5. Uh, when comparing the translation of the first, these first uh, five verses of this chapter, uh, we find that Klaus Marker's translation is more accurate and closer to the original meaning of the Quran. Brentsma's translation is considered unreliable because it is totally deviates uh, from the Quranic content. I think the, the reason can be attri attributed to the fact that Bernd's math translation is part of a lineage of all the Quran translations that return to Robert, Robert of Gaetons, the first Latin uh, translation of the Quran. In contrast, Lazmacher's translation is based on the French version by André de Royer, who translated uh, the Quran directly from Arabic. Now I would like to conclude my lecture with some important conclusions I reached in this research paper. Firstly, the Christianization of Muslims was a key ob objective driving European and Dutch interest in Arabic and Islamic studies in the 17th uh, century, except Skalekher. Secondly, the Quran had a modest and relative presence among Dutch Arabists during the 17th century. Thirdly, there was no interest in Dutch Quran translation uh, at university level to, uh, due to dominance of Latin as the lingua franca. Uh, fourthly and uh, finally, Klaus Marker's Quran translations is superior to Bernsma's in terms of preserving the original structure of the Quran, selecting appro uh, appropriate Dutch linguistic equivalents, using clear and uh, straightforward language, and accurately 
conveying the meanings of the Quranic text. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bolauli, uh, for the rich and comprehensive uh, presentation today. And I will invite uh, all of you here to uh, for the question. But uh, maybe before, I have a big question. Uh, 